so like hundreds and hundreds of years ago, uh, I, this guy said this kind of statement, that a journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. And I feel that's sort of something that can tie into Eve, but modified way. So every New Eden's pilot story, story starts with a fresh clone. So this is my story. And if you have any comments, if you have any comments or questions during the time, you just want to jump in, go ahead. So really, who am I? Or who am I in game? I have a decade of flying, so I started in 2003. And before EVE, uh, I kind of got hooked on it by playing the Elite games. Uh, and EVE was my first MMO. I've tried a few during the times, but not really got hooked. And never really was interested either. And like trying EVE and trying an MMO for the first time, it just, just something that I kind of stumbled onto. Uh, but I do play like some console games, mainly Final Fantasy and now also Dust, but don't really like enjoy other games. I don't really find uh, the amusement in them. But really, who am I? Because I know a lot of people ask, like, what do I do in, in real life, stuff like that. And I've generally not been like, talking about myself as a person and the fact that I do play solo doesn't really help to expose myself very much. But I got my computer, like many others, when I was very young. Uh, and being at the age of seven, since I, I was born 1980, that was fairly young to like, be running around with computers and stuff like that. Uh, my mother brought home a, a computer that was like, oh, cool, I start flickering on this and trying out stuff and me, not speaking English like you do today, obviously, one month, one month in, it crashed. Uh, it went on from there. Like the, the interest uh, in computers just kept growing a little bit. So school didn't go that well. <laughs> Pretty much failed when I, uh, I did graduate high school, but my grades, yeah, they're not something that you would show to any employer. Thankfully, I've never done so. Uh, so, uh, I started working and I have close to a decade of computer-related law enforcement behind my back. And that is partially the, the reason why maybe I'm not having spoken so much about who I am as a person. Uh, and that includes uh, working with the Swedish police, FBI, CAA, MPA, Europol, uh, doing everything from trying pornography to anti-piracy. Uh, so that, that's like, you don't really go out telling everyone exactly what you do because that has implications to your real life. But I'm currently working at an online casino as the senior system administrator. Very su suitable for where we are located right now, uh, except the online part makes it uh, the traveling a little bit less. So my first step uh, in EVE, when I got in uh, contact with it and started to actually look around, like, kind of figure out what this is all about, is the character creator, the character creation. Minimal power, hell yeah. Uh, but it's more of a coincidence that I turned out to, uh, to do the minimal power thing. Being the first MMO, I didn't really look into like the whole backstory. What's going on? Why, you can fight for you know, wealth. They, they, they you can fight for power. They have all this Whatever text, the cause. information about the various races, stuff like that. I kind of just like, Minmatar, that they, those guys got a cool logo. I'll go with that. And then, of course, creating your face. You just click random a few times, and it turns out like the guy on the right there goes very quick, very quick. Attributes, psh, just, ah, uh, charisma. Yeah, that sounds good. That, that sounds like a neat thing to have. Let's do that on Max. <laughs> Needless to say, like the first few years, my training was kind of slow. Because, well, obviously there weren't any skills that required charisma. And my name actually, 
it's kind of, sort of a coincidence because back uh, in 2003 there were a limit to how many letters you could have and that was, well, three, or you had to have more than three. So obviously I was trying to name myself God, didn't work. So I had to go with something else. Uh, so it went, I went with Kriba. Uh, I was born then on June 10th. And immediately thrown into the game, not like you are nowadays when you like get dumped in the station. You get, back then you get dumped right into a friendly asteroid belt filled with pirates. And uh, me, got my awesome Reaper and it's lovely mining, mining laser one there, fitted. And as soon as I started to, well, saw the screen, flashy red boxes, what the fuck? Got a little bit scared. Probably that's the thing that scarred me for the rest of like my entire Eve career to avoid PvP. Uh, but I figured like, yeah, I gotta learn. So I, I tried to click stuff because, I mean, tutorial wasn't really any. It's sort of like trial and error, figuring things out. What to do? Ah, I managed to lock them, shooting a little bit. Pretty intense, for, definitely for a person that hasn't really been playing a whole lot of action field games in that sense. But so began uh, my first weeks. And the first weeks consisted of mining, since that was the only thing to do to get money at the time. Uh, and I was actually looking at for Cruiser at that time, because I had seen like, you go around a little bit in belts, you see some other people mining, you see some people doing some sort of stuff. Uh, I went for cruisers, got to do that, but it, it went slow. Get, gathering money, that's so slow. I got to try something else. So trading probes. Uh, this is like, I found uh, a station that at the time sold probes for 120K or something like that. And 10 jumps away, there was someone buying probes for 170K. Neat, that's 50k profit per probe. My problem was that I didn't realize that it was t 10 jumps there and 10 jumps back for each and every chip. So that turned out to be 20 jumps per ship for a 50k profit. Needless to say, it took a few hours and then I may have sold three of them. Like, this doesn't work. This takes far too long time. This takes even longer time than mining. So I sold them with a loss and went back to mining some more. And I gotta have that Vexer. So spent another few weeks, I think in total, getting the skill book and the Vexer. Probably took three or four weeks, which was, well, looking back at it and looking at people today starting, they have a pretty easy time today. But uh, I realized, or at the time, this being an MMO, you're supposed to do the whole multiplayer thing. You're, got, you're supposed to work with others. You have to rely on your friends to get things done. So obviously I gotta try it. So I went looking for a corp, and I found a corp called Sverike, which was a Swedish corp at the time, or, well, it still is, I hope. Uh, that took me in and started to do a little bit of stuff with them and on my own, trying to see how it uh, went with well, how, how, how to do the multiplayer thing, how to work in a group, things like that. It went fairly well, I would say. I didn't have a lot of fun though because it felt more like a job. I had to do certain corp ops, even if it was like, it wasn't mandatory, but I still wanted to do it obviously and that's, well, that's how it's supposed to work. But I didn't really feel that I found my place. And I was like, I still looking. There was something that wasn't really right. So wh while I was still in the corp, I decided like, I'm gonna try some stuff. I'm gonna explore a little bit. So I decided to go exploring Nolsic, which at the time didn't feel like it do today. It felt like, ah, this is, it's a little bit more risky, obviously, going into Nolsic but it was fairly easy to fly around, it wasn't too many 
gate camps, things like that. And of course, I had my uh, had managed to get myself a shiny uh, Armageddon that I had fitted with a micro warp drive. Obviously, since we didn't have warp to zero back then, you had to go. You landed 15k from the gate. You had to micro warp drive to the gate to get through. It was all fine and dandy until one day, where I was uh, docking in FTC. And CCP decided to change the micro warp drives. So my Armageddon had a one MN micro warp drive. That didn't give a whole lot of boost to my escape from Nullsec, because obviously I went like 118 meters per second, and with the micro warp drive, like 120. It was like insanely much quicker. I didn't make it out on Nullsec. I was one jump from getting to low sec and running into a gate camp. I lost my uh, Armageddon and I lost my pod. Uh, and I do believe someone probably managed to steal my corpse as well. But I'm not sure if it's around still. But I decided after that that being in a corporation with a whole lot of other people that weren't really, weren't really doing anything together. It wasn't really beneficial to me. So I decided that I'm gonna start my own instead because obviously the last few months I have been playing by myself anyway. So why not do it entirely by myself? So then Otherworld Enterprises uh, was born. Uh, and I, I kept on doing the things that I was sort of like doing. Uh, running around, doing a little bit of trading, trying to, well, obviously mining a whole lot, uh, trying to just do something in game. I didn't really have any end goal or any goals at all, except just keep, keep on exploring and keep doing the things, trying out things. And uh, I was running some trade routes, uh, and since still with the whole uh, warp to zero, or non-existent of the warp to zero, uh, I find myself in a pretty remote system, still in high sec. Uh, have just dumped my trade goods, and was going to get back to uh, my then headquarter that I don't remember. Uh, but I needed to go there quicker, so I bought a few overdrives. What I didn't check, and I'm sure a lot of you people have uh, experienced this at the time, is that sometimes items doesn't cost what they're supposed to cost. If it says 12K, and you're used to them costing 12K, you might not realize that they cost 1.2 million each. So I bought a stack of overdrives, heavily overpriced. And obviously I see my wallet go like Chew. What I do then is like, damn it, uh, Okay, I want my money back, sort of. So I released them on the market for the same price that I bought them for. So I released them uh, for 1.2 million again, and like slow boat my, back, uh, my way back. Uh, a few days later, I get myself a Wardic. The guy that bought my overpriced overdrives got upset, and he hired mercenaries to hunt me down for my crime of relisting my items. Which was pretty funny because I only met the guy that was actually uh, chasing me once. So it wasn't really a good investment hiring those mercenaries. But I got a war deck for a month, since that was the default time for how long war decks uh, lasted back then. And obviously, wasn't too expensive for him looking back nowadays since, as I recall, the Wardex was only like five million, something like that for a month. Uh, but it was a, a fun experience and also the first time where I actually uh, encountered a, a war target when they were chasing me. And that sort of like, it gave me a, a pulse and even more feeling of, damn, I don't like PvP. I don't like being chased. This sucks. Uh, but I kept on uh, doing my thing and trying to find a home, and I found it in a system called Lower Devil, which I 
stayed in for a very long time. Uh, and actually, I did most of my mining there in the beginning, only to realize that the system has two, two stations. And one of the stations is a refinery station. The other is not. But uh, I was still refining in the non-refinery refinery station. So obviously, for a loss for a few months uh, in terms of refining ore, until I realized, like, oh, hmm, it looks odd on this UI. When I can have uh, refining efficiency of 50% instead of 25. So that felt like I need to maybe start learning things a little bit more, really like going into things, seeing what the, what kind of different, difference a lot of thing or features have, especially in terms of refining, uh, being a miner, loving that and realizing like, yeah, that's some money that I lost doing, a, well, giving away my minerals to station taxes. Uh, but it also got me to explore other things. Uh, being curious, uh, trying out things, testing things to the left and right. Uh, and one of those things were exploring safe spots. Because back in the days, you could bookmark a system that would create uh, an infinite warp bookmark. Really, so you, you warp in any direction and there's no end to how long you will fly. I decided to try that out see how far can a pod warp. Everyone knows the pods have, well, uses very little capacitor uh, when it warps. And obviously having an infinite warp bookmark, it would warp until the capacitor, well, is, is out. I didn't really think that through uh, at first because obviously I was curious, I'm gonna try this, see what happens. Uh, going into warp, seeing how the, uh, the pod warps away and the minutes pass by. It's gone five minutes. It's gone 10 minutes, I'm still in warp. Uh, I'm thinking, maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I shouldn't have done this. I log out the client, because obviously that's what puts a stop to everything. That puts stops to gate camps and traps and everything, right? Uh, logging back in, I'm still in warp. And it's not stopping. After 20, 25 minutes or so, the pod actually do stop. And then I'm a little bit over 3,200 AU away. <laughs> it's a hell of a good safe spot though, except it just takes a little bit of time going there back and forth. Uh, at, at least I knew that you can warp this far. But then, of course, I had to spend another 20, 25 minutes getting back home. It's a shame I don't have that bookmark any longer. Uh, but I'm, I'm keeping on doing my uh, solo thing. And this is also the year that, uh, this is 2004, by the way. Uh, it's the year when alliances really start to form, like Curse Alliance. Not really alliances that we have today, but spoken alliances. Uh, I see that and the way I am, I, I also realized this is something that I wanna do as well. I wanna try this just because it said that like you have to be an alliance, you have to be a big group of people or to accomplish something. Doesn't mean that, it's, that I can't try it at least. So I start to collect money, uh, or save money, train the skills, uh, because I want to be an alliance too. And I pull that off. Not that it's so hard, looking back, anyway. Uh, I get to create my alliance, and I get that extra bonus of wars will now cost 50 million instead of five. That's a good investment. And uh, as uh, an alliance, obviously you can, being an alliance, you must have capital ships. So the Veldnaut is manufactured in Namar. 
and this is just before CCP actually removes the feature of uh, producing them in MPC stations in high sec. It's pretty much like it comes out of production a week before uh, the winter expansion. That disabled it all. Uh, but having it uh, in MR uh, makes it uh, a new HQ. And uh, also, this is the time, around the time when I actually start making websites. Before I launched uh, the, my websites publicly, uh, I actually did host files and movies for friends and their, well, their, their friends, sort of like a word of mouth thing, uh, on a private server. And I, I, felt, uh, I thought to myself, like, this is perhaps something that could be beneficial to everyone. Having a place to upload images, having a place to upload movies, because obviously YouTube wasn't around like it is today. Uh, and the, the picture you see there is actually the first file that was uploaded. It's a nice fit of a Navy Raven, I believe. Uh, but I ran uh, this on a virtual machine, giving it 20 gigabytes of hard drive, because obviously that will last you like for ages. You can store so much data there. It took like a month or two, and I realized this is gonna work. And it's definitely not going to work in the long run. So I had to uh, revamp everything, or think it through again, really go and redesign it to make it something that can last a little bit longer. Uh, introducing features that I would think was, uh, would make sense to the people, to the community. And I think I, I did fairly well. It's, it doesn't serve the purpose it once did, which I'm all happy about because I've always been about trying to provide something that is not really out there. And with YouTube and like with streaming and Twitch and stuff like that, I know that there's really not a place for EFAS in that sense any longer, which I'm all happy about because I was there to help it carry, carry through like the beginning before there was other places where that were just so much better. Uh, and I also, at the time, started to be interested in statistics because I saw a certain use from e-files by the users. And knowing that, uh, well, not knowing, but uh, statistics, I saw a certain type of behavior on the forums, like in posts, and that got me interested to see like how does the average uh, e-player work? Like what do, how, what do they post? Stuff like that. And that got me, uh, got myself the idea to e-search, which uh, was the site that I launched next. And this, uh, well obviously this is an early screenshot from the forums. And I especially like uh, the third thread, I think it is, where they are talking about how the search works. Oh no, that's not the third, you can't see from here. But one of the th uh, threads there, they talk about how amazing the forum is and how well the search works. And Eve search uh, was launched, well then, two years after Eve and about two years after that post was made. And by that time, they still didn't have any working search function. So uh, Eve Search was uh, very welcomed by the, uh, the community in terms of, oh, hey, I can actually search for my posts now. I can search for other people's posts and stuff like that. And it also provided me with uh, all these lovely statistics of people posting to the left and right, something I, I became very fond of and still enjoy looking and seeing trends, especially uh, today when you see if CCP does a change or something like that, or especially if they do something that we don't agree with, I see that the graphs just shh, goes to the roof in, in terms of posts and also check it, following threads. You can definitely see uh, how the, the community in general feel and when they get engaged in something. And I, I think that that's awesome and I, that's something that I absolutely uh, love checking and seeing and following. So Eve Search uh, was that tool to sort of like 
it gives a little bit of feedback from the community. But that didn't really stop. Uh, I still felt like, oh, I, I really want to keep on making websites, doing things uh, for the community that I hope is beneficial. Uh, so I, I also started to collect stats from uh, the online count, and that turned into uh, what we're calling EVE Offline then. Uh, saving player numbers, making graphs, checking uh, the uptime of the various uh, servers that CCP has, the game servers, and also recently put in uh, the dust player numbers. And it also became a sort of an information point for you guys, uh, especially looking back to what happened in June when CCP decided to pretty much take their servers offline for two days due to their security breach. There wasn't a whole lot of information going, coming from CCP at the time, like, yes, we are down, something is wrong. Their sites were just pretty much offline. Uh, what I really noticed then is how much EVE Offline was actually used. Because during those two days or three days, uh, my visitor count was multiplied by 100. So it went from pretty much nothing to the roof. And that made me also realize, like, this is a service that you guys are finding valuable and useful. And that's, like, great feedback to me. And. I also, uh, with the API coming out from CCP, I felt like this, uh, the API is an absolutely wonderful feature and it's one of the best thing in my, from my perspective that they created uh, out of game. Uh, so I, just, uh, I started to design this character sheet site just to be able to, also, statistics. We could gather uh, skill points, skills, all kinds of uh, data metrics to actually see how the, the community is doing and what you guys like. So I started with, the, with that, uh, only allowing API registration in order to give, uh, get you guys to give me all your information, because that's what I want, really. Uh, but with that information, I could create the ranks, I could create the uh, graphs about what type of ships you guys skill for, what type of, uh, well, the, the ratio of the races, uh, races, stuff like that. And today I have a little bit more than 83,000 pilots uh, totaling together, well, closing in to 3,000 billion skill points. At that time, I also uh, decided, or later, this is fairly recent, I decided to make a global one as well that tries to collect every single pilot in the EVE universe. With that, I, I get, uh, well, it's, it's possible to get sort of like a feed, a near real-time feed of created characters. So if you create a character now, I will know about it in two minutes. So far, I collected uh, 5.2 million uh, pilots, which is sadly far from uh, the total number because uh, I think the last time I heard was around 12 million e-pilots created. So I'm, I'm missing a few, sadly. But hopefully, uh, I'll have them all, just like Pokemon. Uh, but I also get to see the, the amount of uh, corporations and alliances we do create and that is a lot, especially the alliances. You're saying like, yeah, okay, we have 3,000 created alliances. Who are all these guys? Who are all these alliances? Because we don't really see all of them, and we definitely don't see 2,000 of them even fighting each other. When we go out and like hear about alliances, stuff like that, we pr probably only hear about well, a handful, really. But it, it's really interesting to see the, like the behind-the-scenes stuff that there really, really is all these corporations and alliances that 
are really unknown. And that, for me, makes me realize that this, uh, this community is huge. And I also the, toyed around a little bit uh, with a thing called Eve Live. In the beginning, that was my attempt to create uh, Twitch. We ran, a, or we, uh, a few people, myself and a few volunteers, uh, ran around, flying around even, uh, doing live streaming. And this also is like way before YouTube was the hit thing to stream for Twitch. But we, hook, we did the same thing, hooked up uh, a media encoder pretty much to the client, recording the screen, flew around, did some weird stuff. One guy that was a volunteer for uh, my team there decided like, we're gonna see what happens if I take a shelf in null sec. And he did like an autopilot route that took him 20 jumps around null sec, streaming it all live. The mistake there I would say, well sort of, uh, is that obviously this was announced. It didn't take him many jumps before he was dead. Uh, that lived on for a little bit, and I'm gonna return to uh, a big impact that uh, Eve Live actually had, that mm, many might not remember. Uh, but I also planned, it, uh, planned for it to be a community site with blogs, news, and forums, stuff like that. Never really took off. Uh, I did, for a brief time, hold a feeding manager where you could post your, like, setups and stuff like that, and also kind of like what uh, Battle Clinic has today, you can sort of search for a uh, fitting. Didn't really take off uh, as I expected, or as I wanted. And the industrial manager that I had also uh, in the works there, it never really went out of beta phase, so no one really got to use it. Uh, but today it actually do have a sort of a purpose uh, which is what I call the eLive chat, uh, something that I also will go into a little bit in, in a bit later. Uh, let's see, something crashed. Oh. Windows. Psh. There we go. So, the Caldari Alliance Championship. Something that was held in 2005, in, the, in December 2005, and this was the second uh, championship. We had the, the Amarian one uh, the year before. Uh, in this championship, uh, alliance tournament thing, that you wanna call it, uh, I did participate, running solo, yes. Uh, flying my apocalypse, uh, fighting the other teams, or trying to, obviously, a solo guy, probably not gonna work out, and the, the reason I got in is, uh, was because there, there were no rules. No one could say, you didn't have like a minimum amount of people uh, that you had to be to fight uh, a fight, and usually it was three versus three. It was all fine going uh, three versus one. Uh, didn't go so well. Uh, I did carry goodies in my cargo though. So the, my opponents or enemies that killed me, they got some ore, of course. Uh, but I got pretty neat uh, comment from an ISD that was, uh, thought it was very cool that uh, a single uh, pilot went in and tried to fight his way and uh, I did last a bit, little bit longer than most of them, but probably because I went in with all tank. I knew I was gonna die anyway, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to work for it. But uh, after that failure, uh, I kept on being involved in, in the Alliance Tournament, which is really called Alliance Tournament 1, because that's really what it, what it was. And here's where Eli uh, came into the effect. Uh, with uh, CSP's help and CSP noticing that we were trying to, or toying around with this uh, streaming thing, 
they invited uh, us or me and a few others to stream the live uh, stream the finals of the tournament which was a, a very unique opportunity and very fun uh, thing to be uh, uh, involved in and do and it consisted of Loxerite, Tikirar and myself. Loxy, you, you may know because he's sitting managing the cameras for this live stream and doing all the other, a whole lot of other cool videos for CCP. Tikirar was also a pretty known uh, video maker, has done a lot of cool bumping videos that are of very fond memory to myself and many others from back in the days. This is also the tournament where the first ever, well, super carrier, then mothership, was presented, uh, which I think Mercenary Coalition was the winners of this tournament. But also a very unique experience for myself, uh, being up close and seeing this like for the first time. Uh, that made me feel very, uh, well, quite special and honored to like be in those, uh, that set of crowd, seeing that in live for the first time or like, up close. This is also when things start to change a little bit. Because uh, as many of you might know, uh, one of my key doings in EVE is, well, basically selling trust. And this is not something that I ever planned to do. I never planned to do a, a, be a third party. But it started to evolve into that as friends uh, started to ask me for help. Because with my sites, and um, the things that I did, my, my name started to be a little bit known. People have heard of this mysterious Kariba. Uh, and if, uh, some friends were purchasing uh, a supercarrier. And they weren't too sure about the sellers because obviously uh, supercarriers had been sold before. Many supercarriers had been stolen. A lot of people have been, uh, have been scammed. I think we have a, a, a pirate, or had a pirate called Ginger Mag Magican, I think. No, not that, him. Miss Senji, I lost some time. He actually stole a lot of supercarriers. So when my friend wanted to buy one, he wasn't really sure. So he asked me, and since my name was a little bit known, uh, the sellers were like, yeah, okay, we have heard about your name. So we'll, 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 we'll hand you the money while we hand him the ship. Obviously, all went well. Uh, the seller got his money and my friend got his super carrier. And I started to think, is this something that more people could benefit from? And also, is this something that maybe I want to do and I can profit from? So I give, decided to give it a try. I make a public launch of it in 2007, just to see how it flies. And it does. People start to use it. People uh, feel safe enough to start buying and selling more super, super carriers and, and Titans, of course. And to date, I've handled uh, more than 85 trillion ISK, and I've traded more than 5,000 super caps. I've done some small trades as well. For, uh, since, from my point of view, uh, it's not really about the, um, the money involved or the amount of money involved. Uh, five million for me might mean nothing. Five million for a new player might mean everything. And I definitely know how that feels buying those overdrives for 1.2 million. The biggest trades I've done uh, lands around a total of 2 trillion ISK. And there's only been a handful of scam attempts, uh, mainly in the beginning. There's some clever people 
still trying to do things nowadays. There's some clever people that sometimes even manage to pull off a thing or two. Uh, but I've all, uh, I also, having done so many trades, I know some key things to look for. I know when something doesn't really feel that it adds up. But I had two serious traps uh, that gave me a lot of experience as well in managing this and like how to proceed in the, in the future. So things do go wrong. And the first thing that did go wrong was Geilinghan Social Club. They set up a trap for a buyer, uh, which was a little bit, uh, it was like some uh, unfortunate accident. Uh, as the buyer got the ship, I was still holding the money. Uh, guiding, guiding hand was on the same grid, and the buyer drops. He disappears from system. The ship is still there. So he's gotten disconnected, and the ship emergency warps away. I'm not really sure, like, was he happy with the trade now? It's all good. Did he just get disconnected or did he just log out? I, we're waiting like five minutes, ten minutes. The guy doesn't come back. It's like, okay, he probably logged. So I send, uh, send the guys the, the money, of course, because this is trade complete. And just like seconds after I sent the money, the guy logs back in. And as soon as he lands on the grid again, hello, Hector. And his ship is stuck. And the guy's being, actually being ransomed for another five billion. Uh, and this is actually, this is back in the days. So this is like my fourth or fifth trade. So this is like super new. Uh, adding five billion to th that purchase uh, at that time, which was like 12 billion. It's like a, a lot of money for his ship. But I gained a whole lot of uh, valuable information because of that on how to not do things the next time. Uh, so traps like that, they're not really around anymore. But we have a lovely bunch of guys that loves to do things. PL has uh, a few times uh, tried to ruin trades and they sort of managed to do that once in a while too. So I always keep an eye out for probes and things like that. Uh, but in this uh, particular case, uh, which is also fairly recent, the buyer actually warps away and cloaks and then logs off. And then it logs back on again with peels still in system. And it doesn't take him a whole lot of time uh, for them to scan him down and destroy it. The buyer in this case uh, felt that this was my fault. For some reason, uh, obviously, I, I sent them the money because the buyer had warped away. He logged off. It's like a trade complete. You warped away. Uh, but the buyer wasn't really on the same page with me there. He thought that this was my fault. And obviously, I la laid this trap for PL. I pretty much gave them information. Like, be here. Scan them down and kill him. Uh, didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Probably didn't make a whole lot of sense to most people, after all, uh, going back to my numbers, uh, having done those, all those trades, why would I want to suddenly lay out a trap like that? But it, it also may, it makes me uh, realize that when it comes uh, to trades like that, and people that are a little bit new to the whole super cap thing. It might be a good thing to give them a little bit more information, to help them out a little bit, giving them some pointers on what to do and what to not to do. Mainly, like, if you're seeing that there's tons of people in local and they're all read to you, perhaps you should uh, sign out instead of warping. Perhaps you should not log out, just stay cloaked, things like that. And we have a, a wonderful uh, K 
case of a newly produced Titan that didn't really enjoy the boundaries of structures or the, the, the box of the structure. Uh, so when it came out of production, uh, it immediately got ejected out of the pass. And it's pretty fun to see uh, a Titan actually moving at 5k per second away, pilotless. I was laughing, the buyer and seller wasn't laughing. Obviously, this was not on comms or anything like that, so I, could, I just, was just laughing uh, at my own screen. But it was a, a fun event and a little bit nerve-wracking as we have three pilots, buyer, seller and me, trying to race to catch that escaping pilotless Titan. Uh, and we had uh, another trade where uh, the guy forgot to train his Airbus skill. It's quite a surprise when you eject from a, a Titan or the seller ejects from a Titan and then the buyer goes, or, or I tell, like, jump into the Titan now, please. And, and you get like a small quote from the buyer. It's like, I forgot to train the skill. Uh, also, one of those times where I, I just couldn't hold it. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> because that's like, pretty much the, the key thing. Check if you can fly this stuff. But he forgot, and well, obviously it just took two hours, and, and then we was on track again, and he got his ship. Uh, another nervous pilot, he tried to board, but obviously misclicked twice. Being so nervous, he was saying that his hands were shaking. So really fun to hear as well how it looks like, okay, calm down, take some breaths. Now, first select the ship, now click board. It worked though, with a little bit of help. Another guy wasn't really clear on how Supercaps works. He was gonna, we asked like, are you gonna sign out? Mm, what? No, 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 si sign I don't know what that is, what? I'll just warp. Oh, okay. Sure, warp to a safe spot. Cloak. And the guy takes off towards the gate. And I, I, like, I have to ask him as he was warping. It's like, dude, where did you warp? He goes, like, I'm warping on gate. You know that chip doesn't go through a gate, right? What? No, no it, it can use a gate. Sure. No, it can't. Trust me, it can't. And then the guy is like, well, then I don't want it. You can have it back. <laughs> like, yeah. Actually, you should know what you're buying. So I suggest you, I'll make a safe spot for you, and you warp there, and then you cloak. Should you decide you don't want the chip, let's make a new uh, sale for it. Uh, but in between, these things, or uh, trades, I like to try and play the market a little bit, sort of like playing the casino, because you will always win, right? So, uh, with all the changes to minerals, this is also very recently, uh, and a lot of speculation, and I just love reading what everyone else says, because whatever, everything everyone says is true, right? So, I invest a, a shit ton of money into Sidrine. And changes that see sperm making goes live. Some people cash out. I'm like, fuck that. I read a thread. It says it will go up. Prices drop. Damn it. Now, it, it will recover. The thread said that. No. They keep on going down. Oh, well. Hmm. What do I do now? I'll just sell the stock. Just getting rid of it before it drops too low. So I invested 100 billion. I got back 40. So I, I took a loss there. Uh, and that tells me I shouldn't be uh, not playing the market. I shouldn't be playing at a casino because you're probably bound to lose. But it was a, a valuable uh, lesson for myself. I mean, I keep learning every week, every day, probably too, about trying not to be uh, smarter than I am especially not by reading uh, other people's threads about things that I don't even know or have a clue about. 
with uh, developing a whole lot of things, uh, CSP gave us the API. And like I said before, this is uh, one of the absolute best inventions CSP has given uh, developers like myself. And I think a whole lot of other fellow developers agree on this, that this is just awesome and needs to be uh, pursued and kept rolling because this adds something to Eve that no other game pretty much has. So uh, most of my sites are heavily API uh, driven. Uh, at one point, uh, a CSP dev said that 20% of all the API calls that are made to their servers were coming from me. Uh, I was very proud and happy to hear that because that meant, fuck, 20%. Either I make a shit ton of uh, calls, which makes me wow, one of the biggest users of the API, or I'm a fucking awful coder. <laughs> Obviously, I hope for the first one because pff, I'm a great coder. Not. Uh, but on average, I have 12 calls per second. Uh, this may not sound like much uh, because uh, it's only 12 per second. But uh, I know that my sites, they run in cycles, especially eboard. When, uh, when the eboard does an update, it grabs perhaps 50,000, 100,000 pilots in one queue and just rips them off uh, after each other, then goes into a pause for 30 minutes and then do it all over again. So I know that 12 calls per second on average might not be so much, uh, but I do know that it, it, it pulls away like 200 calls per second when it's going, like, when it's peaking. CSPC also introduced uh, an error level. So 80 errors per minute will get you banned. So it takes me seven seconds on average to get banned when something goes wrong. Obviously, uh, during peak times like that, uh, it takes, like, one second. Far, uh, far too short time, regardless, for me to even react if something does go wrong. So I've, I had to do uh, something to get that under control because this was just running wild. So I decided to uh, write myself an API proxy, which is pretty much what everything runs through today. Uh, all the calls goes through one endpoint that controls everything, implementing a few uh, types of error checks and things like that. Um, also, at the same time, trying to get CCP to know who, uh, what my calls are. Uh, and that I put in extra headers in my requests, should they be sniffing the traffic. Uh, I also uh, decided like one of the best things were to get a decent reverse IP. Uh, and that reverse IP translates into Kriba, the guy that is abusing your even line AP, poke me if things go wrong. So hopefully, if things does go wrong and they have no idea who is making the calls, that reverse IP will point them in the right direction. Uh, with uh, the API and things like that, uh, I changed Eve Live into basically putting in-game channels live. Fine. Okay. Yeah, I have to do this quicker then. Uh, Eve Live, anyway, uh, turns in-game uh, channels uh, onto the web, has the side effect of spotting bots, or spam bots, really. To say, it's a good thing. Uh, the future uh, of that, um, we'll try to keep up traffic, hopefully uh, doing heavily involvement in Crest. I have some Android projects in the works, and I have something uh, that will combat spam, and I call it EBL. Uh, but I'm not too sure uh, how that will turn out. It's a little bit reliable on uh, CCP and Crest as well. Uh, having a no name, that's a pretty good thing. I tend to at times fly past gate camps, which is always a nice thing being let through. I get extra beer, free beer from you guys at events like this. I get the best convos in local, thanks to you guys as well. And I get a ton of pilots helping out when things go wrong. I've had SOV and I had outposts. Uh, the first SOV I had was I found an unanchored TCU, which I spent a few hours 
going after and caught up till it uh, and got it anchored. And I got solve. Uh, and then a few days later, I got a visit from PL, the lovely guys. And then I didn't have solve anymore. Uh, I got a station for free, donated to me that I ran for over a year. Also, uh, a lot of events happened during that, uh, that year, which was pretty awesome. I got head GP as well, donated to me for a few months, running it uh, under my own name, although I do suspect that AAA only used me to get war targets into their system. Uh, I met a, a pilot called Laria Raven that uh, was trying to kill one of my Sinos as I was uh, moving uh, a few supercaps of mine. Uh, upon asking her to not kill uh, my Sino alt, she was like, oh, of course, I'm not gonna do that, but I want something in return. Uh, and that return was me, for me to say that Larnia Raven is a really cool pirate. <laughs> Uh, there we go. Uh, so, uh, people knowing my name, that also means that they are after me. I got stuck in a bu bubble camp at the time. Uh, I got drunk one night and tried to loot a can with a plastic wrap. Uh, they killed me fast, those bastards. Uh, people also been selling my corpse for a very uh, large amount of money. Just so you know, they devaluate as more, the more times you kill me, so no need to kill me that much time. People want to take photos of me. Happens all the time. Uh, yeah, this was supposed to be a, a picture of you guys here, since you're like a reason why I'm here today talking. So imagine yourself a picture of yourself there. But seriously, thank you to all you guys and to CCP. Uh, for making this one of the most awesome experiences yet. Uh, from that Reaper to actually standing here. And that about concludes it. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to poke me or grab me or anything. Thank you. <laughs>